This is the Maldives, an island nation located in the Indian Ocean, formed in ring-shaped atolls on top of thriving coral reefs. The islands are scattered across the sparkling blue sea. Tourism is the main occupation of the islanders, while the abundance of varieties of fish in the azure seas makes fishery a thriving industry. This documentary explores the yellowfin tuna fishery in the Maldives, the methods adopted in the fishery, the life of the fishermen, and the impacts of this type of fishery. Just a few kilometers from the capital of the Maldives lies North Ariatol. Ukuras, in this atoll, is an island well known for fishery. The island, with third highest population in the atoll, has approximately 700 people. The island is going through a phase of development. New houses and new buildings are sprouting up. Not only are buildings constructed in the island, boats are built as well in Ukuras, mainly to cater to the yellowfin tuna fishery, which has become the main source of livelihood for the people of Ukuras. There are 13 vessels in Ukuras, and eight of those vessels are equipped for yellowfin tuna fishery. Approximately 95% of the men in the island are engaged in yellowfin tuna fishery. This is the residence of one of the fishermen. Shaukat Ibrahim has been a fisherman since he was 19 years old. He's the father of seven children and a grandfather of four children. Why did so many fishermen from Ukula turn to yellowfin tuna fishery? The fishermen of the island turned to yellowfin tuna fishery in late 1999. Many people discovered that the yellowfin tuna fishery was more profitable than the traditional skipjack tuna fishery. We asked Shaukat why he left skipjack tuna fishery in favor of the yellowfin tuna fishery. I turned to yellowfin tuna fishery about three years ago. Mifko started exporting yellowfin tuna around that time, and the price of the tuna was quite stable. Earlier we were selling skipjack tuna at the fish market in Mali. The price of skipjacks at the fish market was always fluctuating. Yellowfin tuna prices were higher and more constant. We started yellowfin tuna fishery when its exports began. We also found out that we received a higher income from yellowfin tuna fishery. Each dawn, except on Fridays, the fishermen rise from their sleep and leave in the boats in their quest for yellowfin tuna. But to reach their targets and to have a good catch of yellowfin tuna, first they have to go through a few processes. The boat makes its way to Festu Maha, which is about 14 miles from Ukulas. At 5.45 in the morning, they arrive. They jump into the Azure Sea and snorkels in search of bait fish. Festumaha is a very good breeding ground for bait fish. As the sun rises, the fishermen are catching sprats, a type of bait fish. One hour later, they have enough sprats. The sprats will be used to catch scats, which will in turn be used to catch the yellowfin tuna. At 6.45, they leave in search of scats. What changes has Ukulas gone through in recent times? Compared to previous times, the island is going through many changes. Yellowfin tuna fishery is more profitable compared to skipjack tuna fishery. The youth believes that the best source of income they can find in this part of the country is yellowfin tuna fishery.
From Festu Maha, the boat is making its way to Banga in North Mali Atoll. It's a distance of 39 miles, covered in about four hours. At 11 o'clock, the fishermen arrive at Banga, a large lagoon abundant with scats. They get ready to catch the scats. Hooks are attached to the bait fish. When the boat arrives at the lagoon, they find that fishing vessels from various islands are there with the same mission. A man dives into the blue waters of the lagoon to locate schools of scats. Another fisherman sprays water into the sea. Another man throws the small bait fish they had caught earlier. The men are also sprayed with the water to reduce the heat of the scorching sun on their bodies. After catching enough scats, they leave Banga at 2.45. This is a moment to have a shower and they get ready to go back to the island. On the way home, they stop at a barge to collect ice. Ice is very important to preserve the yellowfin tuna in good conditions and maintain the quality standards required for exports. The crew prepares some food. They have a delicious meal of chicken and watermelon. At 6.50 in the evening, the fishermen arrive at Ukulas. The boat is loaded with scats. The fishermen unload the scats into a makeshift tank afloat in the lagoon. The scats have to be kept alive till next day when they will be used as bait to catch yellowfin tuna. We have less time to spend with the family since we moved into yellowfin tuna fishery. It's four in the morning. A soft knock on the door and a wake-up call is given by the captain to awaken his crew. This tradition has been passed on to them through generations of fishermen. Chakot has a light breakfast prepared by his wife Zulfa. He takes his clothes and other belongings he will need for the fishing trip. The boat stops and collects scats from the tank. The scats are healthy and full of life. The boat leaves for a fishing ground to the northeast of the island. At six in the morning, they arrive at the fishing ground. Looking through a set of binoculars, they are met with the spectacular sight of dolphins. This is an indicator for the presence of the school of yellowfin tuna. The boat overtakes the dolphins. The fishermen hook the scats and throw the scats. Within seconds, the yellowfin tuna fall for the bait. It's 6.45 in the morning. 
It's the first catch of the day. Two men are required to hold the timber. They drag the line with the hook fish through water till they reach a certain position in the boat. The tuna is then hauled and put in a particular hold of the boat. They bleed the tuna and it's gutted. Within a minute, it's put in chilled water. The fishermen wear gloves for protection, but sometimes even a glove is not enough. Sometimes a determined tuna fights for survival. It dives deep till the line reaches the end. It has to be holed up again. in the morning, the fishermen head for another fishing ground. They have to move from a fishing ground when the school of tuna breaks up due to fishing activity there. They meet another boat from Ukulas, already there for fishing. Since the yellowfin tuna is mainly for export, strict quality control is essential. The fishing vessel has to be registered with the tuna collecting vessel or the collection center. Each boat has to have a health certificate that has to be renewed every three months, and a medical checkup of the fishermen is done every six months.